So you want to know what it's like to be contacted by a demon. Before I get into it, I'd like to recommend a couple YouTube pages. The first one is Oily Stewart, the beautiful and talented Oily Stewart. My dear, dear friend, JD Temple's page from the Light of the Darkness. You can catch me in the messages usually on the weekends. They do a lot of live podcasts, great information. They're both authors both powerful practitioners and they speak truth and they're honest and I really do enjoy them. So go out and uh, support their page, pages and subscribe. Now, let's get into this. What is it like to contact a demon? Now, everybody has their own experiences. These are my experiences and you know you can take them at a grain of salt because you might have different experiences yourself and i definitely recommend having your own experiences I've heard demons speak. 
Uh, a lot of times when it's an invocation, I hear my voice. I've heard it in an accent. Um, I'll give you some examples of certain situations. Um, I have been possessed. Um, there is one video I just showed you of a possession. Now, with that possession, I don't remember anything. I, I came out of it. I had, I know I had tears. I was, I felt fatigued. And I had this flash of a ritual setup. Whatever, I just kept going on with the ritual. But I knew something happened. And after the ritual was done, first thing was, man, I hope my fucking video camera captured it. Hold out the memory card, and I was pleasantly surprised. While I'm going through the video, and I'm watching the possession, I see this ritual again, this ritual setup. I'm thinking maybe there's something to this. I dreamt about it. I seen it in my dreams. And the next day when I was taking my son out just for a walk around the neighborhood, well, not the neighborhood, my property, I seen it again. And I thought, okay, this was given to me. I need to do this ritual. And I did the ritual. And it was a fucking amazing ritual. It was a, a different setup. It dealt with four spirits. You might call them demons. Gods. But yeah. You gotta listen to when uh, a spirit's trying to tell you something. I mean, there's a lot of times when uh, I... Well, when I started out, I would question if it was just me or the demon talking to me. When I do a ritual, if you notice in some of my videos, you'll see a few books on, around my circle. Now, one you could call the Book of Shadows. It has uh, writings in it, um, the, the rituals that I'm performing. The other book, just a line piece of paper, a uh, line full of line pieces of paper with some writing in it that I have written down in the ritual. When I'm being told something, I don't want to forget it. And then I have another book that has blank sheets of paper. And if a sigil is given to me, or if there's something I see that I want to draw right away because I, I'm scared I'll forget it, I do that. I recommend that. I recommend that you have uh, a pen and a piece of paper ready. Just in case that something's being told and you can, you might forget about it. Because a lot of things are important that are being told to you. Yeah, that Marbus possession was fucking... Was, let me put it this way. Let me put it in a way you might understand when I see a possession of myself. It's like going fishing and catching a huge fish. You're going, fuck yeah, I scored, look at this fish. Now a lot of people might be scared of being possessed or, you know, hearing a, a spirit speak out of the circle, which has happened to me as well. It's fucking priceless. It's like I fucking I caught that big fish. I love it. You know, I think when I first got into magic, black arts, it was my goal to have contact right away. Didn't want anything. Just wanted contact. Scary at the starting. But now I have no fear now. When I'm speaking to a demon, or when I see a demon, I try not to have fear. Zozo ritual, scared the fuck out of me. And I was possessed. Got that on tape as well. That marvelous one, 
so fucking crazy. When I came out of it, I like, I knew it, like tears, blacked out. I have about five minutes of footage of me in possession. Just not even really coherent words coming out of it. Epidine. I heard Abaddon. I did not see him. It was mumbled when he spoke, and it was low. It almost sounded like he was underwater. I caught a few things that he was saying, the important things. When I was in the right, I think I just put blood on the sigil. I don't know if I put it into the fire yet. I'm not too sure. But I know that I felt something was happening. The air was shifting. I feel the um, vibrations. You got to feel the vibrations. Anyways, I'll, I'll get into that, but it was, so I'm there. Feel the vibrations. And this is the only time it, this has ever happened to me. I felt like on a hot day and the sun comes out and you got your shirt off and like you're feeling like you're getting crisp. Not like I was in fire, but I was getting burnt. And I did and when it was happening, I didn't know how far it was gonna go. Like honestly, I thought. I was actually going to get burnt. Like my skin was fucking legitly on fire. First time it's happened. Fucking amazing. And I caught it on video. I think the only only demon that I've had trouble with, now I'm going to tell you how I fix this, was Larage. Summoning Larage and he appears, then he'll start asking questions and he was fucking, he always fucked with my head. When I go into a ritual, I'm pretty serious, I like to keep it serious. Sometimes it doesn't go that way. Um, I had this ritual where I was totally f fucked up. It was fucking with my head, asking me a million questions. And I just hung in there. And when it was done, he said he would help me. And he laughed. And I caught on. I thought, man, this motherfucker's fucking with me. The next time I went in with them, I didn't let them bother me. I actually kind of laughed about it. And the wrist phone went really well. What I figured out was, with him, I needed a sense of humor. Different. But I, I, I would never have learned that if I didn't call on him again. Experience calling on these spirits and how they interact with you. When I do a ritual and I call in a, a certain demon or a god or a king or a prince, I will do my altar a little bit different for each spirit. Amodius, I'll give you an example with Amodius. When I set up that last video that I did for that last ritual, I wanted to use a lot of candles. I just went nuts, you know, every ritual. When I start, I meditate and I open my third eye. It's really important. Anyways, so I, uh, 
They don't feel him. And then boom, just crush, he's there. And the first thing I hear is I'm impressed. Who's impressed with the setup? Now, when I started out, I think I had one, two black handles. And that's fine. You know, a lot of people can't afford all these candles and, you know, to invest all this money. And I think the spirits know that, you know. And I'm not going to tell people how to set up their um, altars. And I'm not even going to tell you really how to do your own ritual work. Because I do believe you should do your own ritual work so you can get your own results. But when I'm going to call in, let's say a king, I want him to feel like a king in my temple. I want him to know that I fucking respect the fact that he's even shown his presence. Just to let you know, the night before, before I go into a ritual, I meditate on the sigil. I call them, just meditate, consecrate all the candles. I give my temple, let's say if I'm working with Amodius, my temple is for Amodius. I have everything set up. Then the night before, the night after, sorry, I go into ritual. No stone unturned. that's me but if you're lighting a candle if you're lighting a black candle lighting some incense sitting back doing a chant looking around for a fucking demon to show up and every day you're playing that chant music and maybe just meditating you know just got your eyes closed and nothing is happening You need to learn how to meditate. You need to learn. You don't need to. You do whatever the fuck you want. But if you want the results that I'm getting, you need to learn to open that third eye. I do it every ritual before I even start sitting there opening my third eye. I take my time and sit back let him speak to me, whoever I'm calling, he or she, because Astrod comes to me as a girl, as a woman. You might want to know what I see. How does Belial look to me? Let me explain a couple of things. How Belial looks to me, good chance it's not what he's going to look to you. Unless you sit there and stare at pictures of Belial on the internet, drawings that people have made up to say, hey, this is what Belial looks like. Some people, when they see a spirit, that's the way the spirit looks to you everyone else so I'm not going to tell you what Belial looks like to me I don't want to influence anybody that's where I stand on that and Gnosis I have my own Gnosis My Gnosis isn't about saving the world. My Gnosis is usually about how to perform better my magic practice. With Azazel, I work with Azazel a lot. And he shows me the blackbirds. He's the one that told me to take my time. He's the one that told me to, before I go into a ritual, have a day before. 
even two days before I go into ritual. Now, that's what's told to me. I'm telling you things that, more like, for example, my gnosis on that and taking your time. People can write a whole fucking book on gnosis. I've seen it. Now, you gotta look at it this way. Do you trust that magician? Or is it a real good fucking story? Is it just all fiction? Maybe he's a real good fiction writer. And now he's saying that he's in the occult and talking to demons. I love reading Gnosis, but I don't live on people's Gnosis. Here it is. I don't give a fuck what a demon tells you. It's for you. This demon told me something I gotta share with the world. Okay, maybe I'll share it with you. But do your own Gnosis. Sometimes with my sense of humor, I've been sarcastic. Sometimes I just don't find the words. But I'm a good man. I consider myself a good man. Well, I think I'm a good man. When I go in that circle, I'm not there. That's not me. There's glimpses of me in that circle. But I'm a totally different person. If you call that a person. I am nothing. And I am everything. I am the client. I am the spirit. When I come out of that circle, it's not done. I still can feel remorse and pain. You might not believe in demons. You might be watching this just for the fuck of it. You might not believe in anything. You know, there's a lot of different people out there. I used to judge somebody by the things they had. It was very materialistic. If I had, let's say, a better stereo than my friend, then I was doing better than him. There's people out there that don't have anything, just struggling, not happy with their lives. And there's some that are just grateful what they have you might be following this path you might be in it for lust revenge knowledge fame money I don't know where I'm going to be in a year. I have an idea. But 
truly, I don't know what's gonna happen to me in a year. But whatever happens, it's gonna be by my hands. I believe in what I want. I worship what I want. I study what I want. I think it's important that everybody take their own path. Be your star. Protect your kingdom, friends.